Hello everybody, Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. Today let's talk about where is the beat calculator in Cubase 13. What is the beat calculator? I'm back in Cubase 12 for a second here. And as I look down at my tempo in the lower right area, this particular track is set at 120 BPM. And of course I can put my mouse over it and spin it to a different tempo. But in Cubase 12, we used to be able to go up to the menu that said project. And then midway down, we had an option that said beat calculator. And if we wanted to change the tempo, we had the option to hit tap tempo. Then I could hit my space bar repeatedly a number of times, which I'm doing, which would calculate the beats. In this case, it now says 152. And if I say OK, I have a couple of options depending on what's going on. One says that the tempo track start. And if I click on that, my tempo now in the lower right has been changed to 152. This was a quick, easy way to set up our tempo. And by hitting the space bar, you got a feel for the actual tempo. But now I'm going to close out of Cubase 12, back in Cubase 13. If I go back up to my project menu, and then try to come down to the beat calculator, find it's no longer in this list. There's various things for tempo track, tempo detection, but our beat calculator is no longer here. On the other hand, if we go down to our transport bar, you see that there's an option down here now that says tap, which gives you a hint that something is going on that relates to the way we did things. But if I go over to this tap button, I start to tap it, it tells me that I'm going to insert a tempo track or a change of tempo. I can see that it did change my actual tempo, but did it change the project tempo? If I move my cursor over and tap this tempo again, and then move my cursor back, I can see that the tempo has changed over here. And if I move my cursor here, the tempo has changed over here. So we have a tap tempo option, but it's doing all kinds of insert tempo things that we may not want. So what is going on here? Where's our simple, easy option we used to have of hitting the space bar to change the tempo? One thing you'll notice if you hover over this tap tempo button is you get a little tool tip that says tap tempo shift plus the space bar. And that's the first clue to let us know that we now have a keyboard shortcut by holding down shift, which I'm now doing, and then tapping my space bar. And as I do it, you can see the tap button is lighting up and the actual tempo is changing. Before we go further, let's examine something here. We go back up to our project menu and we come down to the option for the tempo track, which is a specific track dedicated to changing your tempo. If I select this option, you can see right here in the area where I've been working with the loop. If I expand this a little bit, I have all kinds of tempo changes now inserted into my project, which is not what I wanted to do, even though this is a good option and I may want to do this at some point. But I was looking to make a simple tempo change at the very beginning of my project. And instead, this inserted all kinds of tempo changes. So let's fix this first. You can do that by hitting Control and the A key for Control All, and then hitting the Delete key. That'll remove all these extraneous tempo points we put in here. Close this out. If we go next to the Tap button, we can see there's a little drop-down list. If we hit that, we now see that we have all kinds of choices on how we're going to insert our tempo. Right now it's set to automatic. We'll come back and look at that in a second. But as we look down this list with all these other options we have, we have one down here that says set the project tempo. I'm going to change and select that instead. Again, I'm going to hold the shift key, hit my space bar a number of times. The tempo is now reading at 154. And if I go back up to my project and I come down to the tempo track, I can now see from the beginning of the project to the end, the only thing that's been changed is the actual tempo of the project. No little points have been inserted, no tempo changes, just the project itself. So our first thing to understand in our first new solution here is we're going to hold shift and hit the space bar to activate this and we're going to define what we wanted to do, the little drop down menu next to it. Next up, let's explore these other options. We're going to pass on the automatic again, we'll come back to that. So our first option says insert the tempo event at the selection start. What this is telling us is if we make a selection, I'm going to select two bars here. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to tap a slow tempo. Now I'm going to play this whole section and see what happens. Just like it said, at the selection it slows down and then it remains at the slower tempo. It doesn't jump back to the fast one after the selection. And remember, you have to actually select these options and make sure that the check mark is next to them for them to be active. Now our next option says insert the tempo event at the last playback start position. This is interesting because it actually remembers where things start. In this example, I'm gonna put the cursor at bar 21. I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna stop at bar 23 and then tap the tempo, holding shift and hit the space bar. And if it works properly, it's actually gonna put the tempo change back at bar 21. Let's see what happens. That's exactly what it did. 
And then the next option, insert the tempo event at the cursor position. That's going to pretty much do exactly what we would expect. I'm going to put the cursor at bar 26. I'm going to tap in a slow tempo. I'm going to start from bar 24 and play it. And then like we'd expect at bar 26, it put a new tempo change. And then we looked at the option to set the project tempo. Below that, it says display only. So if you're looking to just find out what the tempo is, but you don't want to affect the project in any way, then you have that option. Now let's go back to automatic and see what that's all about. In the automatic setting, if we make a selection, then it's going to take that into account. Meaning if I make a tempo change, it's going to do it at the beginning of whatever selection I have. If nothing is selected and I put my cursor someplace to start, and then I begin playing the project. If I tap in the tempo, it takes a second to understand what I tapped in, but it will actually insert it way back at where it actually began playing the project, which was bar 21. So if I start from the beginning here, I have a tempo change at bar 21. If nothing is moving and the project is standing still, and then I hold shift and tap in a tempo, it then records that tempo change at the cursor position. And then finally, if I come down to the tempo display on the transport bar and I deactivate the tempo track, again, if I hold shift in the space bar, that one changes the project tempo. So you have all the options you can choose here on the drop down list, or they automatically get chosen for you, depending on whether things are selected, whether the project is playing, stopped or whether the tempo track is activated and that leaves one last question what sets up the key command for shift in the space bar to affect this tap tempo to answer that question let's go up to the edit menu and down to the key commands and we have an option now in our key commands to hit a little keyboard here that will tell us whatever shortcut keys we hit and what they're assigned to so if i hit shift in my space bar it tells me that that's assigned to the tap tempo and if i look down my list of commands it actually shows me the tap tempo highlighted the key command of shift and space. So actually I could delete that and then create my own key command if I really wanted something different. So be aware that can be customized if you want. And hopefully that brings to light the mystery of the new tap tempo options in Cubase 13. All right, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase and WaveLab and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we answered the question, what has happened to the beat calculator and what has replaced it in Cubase 13? And the answer is we have found out there are new tap tempo modes. And we looked at those modes, we learned what automatic is, various insert tempo modes, how to set the project tempo, and then we ended up learning that we could reassign the shortcut key that's by default shift and space to something else if we wanted to. And we will continue to learn all these different features and functions in Cubase. As always, it's great to have you guys here, and I'll see you on the next video.